Here's the recap of the first season of Echo. We are shown a legend of the indigenous people of the Americas. Humans came from clay and lived underground. But one day the cellar collapsed and a woman received from their gods, the power with the help of which she was able to move her people to the surface. That's how the Shafa tribe came to be. We are shown a family living in the territory of that tribe. One night a deaf girl Maya asks her mother for ice cream and they go to the nearest store. However, on the way the brakes fail and they have an accident. The mother dies and Maya loses her leg. It turns out that the girl's father, named William, worked for the Mafia and thus his enemies decided to take revenge. After all that happened, the man takes Maya with him and drives her to New York. There he begins to work for Wilson Fisk, also known as Kingpin. The criminal leader immediately saw something special in Maya and began to raise her as his own daughter. When William is killed, Kingpin makes her his right-hand man. Once she even fought with the daredevil on equal terms, then got the respect of her mentor. Next comes the events of the Hawkeye series. There Maya learns that it was Kingpin who sold out her father after which he was killed by Clint Barton. At the end of the season, the girl finds Wilson Fisk and puts a bullet right in his eye. But as it turns out, he does not die. Without knowing it, Maya for five months tries to destroy and at the same time capture Kingpin's empire. But something goes wrong and she is wounded. The protagonist returns to her hometown located in Oklahoma. She climbs into her grandmother's former house and stitches up the wound. In the morning, she meets her cousin named Biscuits and asks him not to tell anyone that she is here. Neither her grandmother nor her very close cousin Bonnie. Soon she visits her uncle Henry who has his own roller club, but actually also works for Wilson Fisk and does transportation in the area. Vicky, the roller club administrator, recognizes Maya and informs New York that he has information about the girl who shot Kingpin. Maya asks her uncle Henry for help. Turns out she didn't come here for nothing. The fact is that one of the main lines of arms supply for the Kingpin empire passes through here. Henry does not want to listen to her and even less to help her as he knows that her actions, whatever they are, will bring trouble on all the inhabitants of the town. Meanwhile, Maya begins to have visions. She sees the very scene from the beginning of the series. A woman who participates in a kind of sports competition for the right not to be banished, and a girl intending to become a defender of the local land from robbers. All these visions are mostly unrelated, and the protagonist does not understand what is happening to her. Maya asks the Biscuits for help with her work. She asks him to get her some equipment, and then at night she jumps off the bridge and lands on a train passing underneath them. It is guarded by Kingpin's men, but the girl manages to sneak under the wagons unnoticed. She cuts through the bottom, sneaks in and hides something in one of the boxes filled with weapons. Then she carefully gets out, welds up the bottom and runs to the end of the train. However, on the way, her prosthetic gets stuck between the wagons. Suddenly the visions intensify and she gains inhuman strength. Then she manages to free herself and jump onto the Biscuits car, which has been chasing the train all this time. When the cargo arrives in New York and the bandits unload the boxes, there is an explosion and a whole warehouse of weapons goes up in the air. Uncle Henry learns that a whole army of bandits is coming here soon to find out how this could have happened. The man asks Maya to keep her head down and maybe he can settle things. The girl goes to her grandfather, who keeps a store with various junk. She asks him to make her a new prosthesis, and while he is working, gives her a temporary one. At this time, the biscuits blob about the fact that the protagonist came to the town and Maya's grandmother and her cousin Bonnie find out about it. We continue to be told stories from the main character's visions, where there are sports competitions. The girl's team starts to lose, as one of the best players was against them. However, at the last moment, the same thing happens that happened to Maya earlier. Some powers awakened in her, and thanks to them her team won the competition. In the second visions, which are stylized as silent movies, we see a girl who was trained from an early age to become a defender of these lands, the so-called Blight Thorismen. But her father believed that only men should do such things and that women's job was to raise the children. One day her father's squad was ambushed and the girl felt it thanks to some unseen power. 
she came to the rescue in time and earned respect among her people. Maya tries to make sense of her visions and walks through the woods. Suddenly, she is knocked out and brought to a roller club. It turns out that it was Vicky and his friends who kidnapped the protagonist. He agreed with Kingpin's men that he would give them the girl in exchange for a large sum of money. Vicky even had to tie up his employer, Henry, as he was against it. At this point, Maya's cousin, Bonnie, walks into the roller club looking for her relative. Henry tries to chase her away as he fears she will also get into trouble. But the villains guess their kinship. They tie up the girl and send her to the back room where Maya was put before. While the couple is trying to get out of their imprisonment, Kingpin's thugs arrive at the roller club. Vicky demands money, but the men are clearly determined to simply kill everyone here. At that moment, Maya turns the music up full blast and begins to systematically get rid of all the criminals. She almost succeeds, but the leader of the bandits takes Bonnie hostage and the protagonist has to surrender. They are put on their knees and are about to be executed, but suddenly the villain's phone rings. The upset man informs his men that they have been ordered to return and they leave, keeping the protagonists alive. Henry and Maya realize that the only person who could have given such an order is Kingpin himself, which means he is still alive. The next day, Maya's grandfather brings her a modified prosthesis that is decorated with the symbol of their tribe. Back home, the girl sees Kingpin with an eye patch and he offers her dinner together. His men put a contact lens in her eye, which translates to her everything he says. Kingpin remembers that Maya has not been the kindest child since childhood. That's why he treasures her so much. Moreover, for many years, the man carried the interpreter around with him because he did not know sign language. But later, he got rid of her because she knew too much. Kingpin informs Maya that he is not angry at her for shooting him in the eye. He realizes that it was fair as he caused her father's death. However, he asks Maya to come back to him so that they can run the criminal empire together. The man gives her time to think after which he leaves. The next day, she shares this information with Uncle Henry, who tries to dissuade his niece, as it is a trap. Kingpin always does this. He roughly speaking lures people to him and then leaves them no choice. At that moment, Maya has another vision, but this time stronger than usual. Henry realizes that her grandmother told her about something similar and takes her to see her. Maya does not really want to communicate with her as they parted in a bad way in childhood. However, the protagonist tells her about her visions and grandmother tells her that she had similar ones. It turns out that when she was pregnant with Maya's mom, the birth was not going well and the doctors could do nothing about it. Then the tribe took her to the forest where she began to see similar hallucinations. Soon, the power of the ancestors helped her and the mother of the main character was born. She was special and had the gift of healing. Maya remembers that once in her childhood, she brought her a dying woodpecker. Mom folded her fingers and cured it. However, the protagonist does not believe in all these fairy tales and leaves her grandmother's house. Old lady realizes what she has to do and decides to sew a superhero uniform for her granddaughter. Maya goes to Kingpin and points a gun at him again. He is not afraid and tells her that their stories are similar. It turns out that as a child, Wilson beat his father to death with a hammer because he abused his mother. He again invites Maya to join him and tells her that he will be waiting for her in the morning on the airplane. However, the protagonist does not show up and Kingpin orders her grandmother and cousin to be kidnapped. Biscuits informs Maya that she can't find her relatives anywhere and the girl hurries to her grandmother's house. There she meets the spirit of her mother and the she tells her daughter that the women of the past will help her fight. Maya puts on a costume made by her grandmother and goes to meet Kingpin. Wilson Fisk again tries to convince the protagonist to return to him, but she is adamant. The enraged villain is going to kill all members of her family but suddenly, Maya activates the power of the ancestors. Bonnie and Grandma also receive the power, and together they take down the bandits. Maya crosses her fingers like her mother once did, touches Kingpin's heart and head, then goes into his memory when he killed his father. It's not really clear what happens here, but I can assume she's healing the villain's childhood mental trauma. A clueless Wilson Fisk runs away from the town, and when he takes a plane home, 
decides to become mayor of New York City. Meanwhile, Maya's family meets and becomes united again. This is the end of the first season. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.